to remember why the American foreign policy failed in the case of Cyprus. First of all, it did not prevent the division, and secondly, it has not been effective in helping us reunite the island. So, we're going to be dealing with some uncomfortable truths about the foreign American policy, but it is something we need to do. Hopefully, it will reinvigorate our interest in Cyprus, in Greece, in our issues, especially at this time when both Cyprus and Greece are being threatened by Turkey uh, because of the gas and oil explorations that Cyprus has started. Without further ado, I don't want to go on discussing this, just to put, to, to put the focus on what we are about to do. I would like to call on Dr. Spiros Pires, the President of the AHI Foundation and the President of the Church Council of St. George, to uh, give us his greetings. And I have limited the speakers to two minutes. If they don't stop at two minutes, you are uh, allowed to clap. <laughs> yeah. uh... Again, uh, welcome to all of you uh, to this uh, event, to this tour of church. As the president of the Paris Council of the Greek Orthodox Church, St. George Greek Orthodox Church, I welcome you here. And I welcome you here, of course, as the president of the American Hillary Institute Foundation. I am talking very fast, so my accent is confusing you. However, I will tell you a very fast and a very short story. When um, you know that I was raised and I was born and raised in, in Kalamata, Greece. And uh, Kalamata, most of you know it from the olives. It's a beautiful town. Uh, I spent my childhood there. I went to the high school there. And I used to live <coughs> at, in a house at uh, Papazoni Street, number 29. In 86, an earthquake happened, a huge earthquake, and that house went down. And uh, when well, the next year I went to Greece, I went to Kalamata, I actually saw uh, the vacant uh, area and the, 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 the grounds of that house being excavated, and there was no house there. And when I saw that, it, you know, I will never forget that scene ever from my memory. There's some scenes that don't get out of your memory. They stay there forever. Uh, you know, it brought tears to my eyes. And I felt very strange that I could not see the house that I was born and raised. Now, that, that house was disappeared because of an earthquake. But there are houses in northern Cyprus that have disappeared from our compatriots and Kohelites, the Cypriots, because of injustice, because of unfairness, because of many things which are actually inhumane and worse than earthquakes. And therefore, I am very happy and very proud to have this event happening here today to promote the cause for all these people who lost their houses, for all of these people who actually cannot get back their houses. And I am very happy that we are now turning a page and we're trying to organize ourselves again in a much more unified way to make sure that the cause for these people to go back to their places, to their houses, is going to be successful this time. So without further ado, I am calling in Achilleas. Sorry, because I took me three minutes, I think. But, uh, you know, congratulations and enjoy the event. On behalf of Hellenic Vision, I would like to welcome you all to this important event about Cyprus. In Cyprus, 
ethnic cleansing was perpetrated by the Turkish army against the Greek Cypriots before the phrase ethnic cleansing was even invented. The fact that such huge violations of human rights, international law and justice are perpetuated to this day causes a lingering pain to our hearts, our collective heart. This is why we at Hellenic Vision took the initiative for this event to show that we will never forget that we will always seek justice for Cyprus. So I want to thank the organizing committee of our of Hellenic Vision who worked very hard for this event and also other members for their excellent work. First and foremost, the Honorable Ambassador of Cyprus, retired, Mr. Achilleas Adoniadis, the President of the Organizing Committee and our moderator tonight. <laughs> then our technical team, Mr. Bill Roda and Dr. Vladimir Vishnik, the ladies, Maria Papadakis, Evi Georgopoulos, Fotini Fludas, Kaliopi Balatsuka, Nadia Papakostadinu, Mary Roda, also Dr. Sotirios Vataviolos, Mr. Evangelos Delicuras, Mr. Peter Kagoyanis, and last but not least, our Dr. Spiros and Amalia Spirias for their contributions to this event. I'm really fortunate and privileged to have such a team. Our thanks go to AHI and its president, Mr. Nick Larigakis, who were able to come from Washington and present this informative and touching documentary for our community. And to AHEPA, and in particular, Mr. Asteris Fanikos, for the excellent cooperation in organizing this event. I'm very pleased that so many Greek-American organizations co-sponsored the event, and I want to welcome them and uh, thank them. The uh, co-sponsoring organizations are uh, the Cyprus Federation of America, PSECA, International Coordinating Committee, Justice for Cyprus, Federation of Hellenic American Organizations of New Jersey, and its president, Mr. Tassos Evstratiadis, welcome. The, so with no further ado, ah, here are our uh, dignitaries. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome to our community the, uh, the Honorable Consul General of the Republic of Cyprus, Mrs. Kula Sofianou. And the Honorable Consul of Greece, Mr. Evangelos Kyriakopoulos. Welcome to our community. So welcome all, and um, I would like to, have, to tell you, to let you, to say, uh, have a good time, but uh, I, I don't think that's what you're going to have tonight. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Dear President, Reverend Father, um, when Ambassador Achilles Andoniadis called me to tell me about this event, the first thing that I said to him was to congratulate him, and I also asked him, aren't you retired? <laughs> I had the pleasure of working with him as a young attaché at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs years ago. And what distinguished Ambassador Antoniadis was his pure love for Cyprus and a just cause. And I can see that now he's even he's still he's still active in our cause, and I'm very proud that he's a member of your community. And uh, I think we should give a round of applause for Ambassador. I had the opportunity to see this film along with the Consul of Greece. I have to say that the Consul of Greece, both Ambassador Bautin and Consul Kyriakopoulos, they always 
They always stand by the Cyprus, and that's very important. They always support our events. So I had the pleasure to view this film um, at NYU. Um, in a, it was a Friday evening. Again, it was six o'clock, and again the room was like here. It was crowded with people, with people that really care about Cyprus, with people that they haven't forgotten what took place in 1974, with people that. Uh, Again, they stand by the side of Cyprus. We need your support. We also need to educate the American public of what took place in 1974 and of the consequences of the invasion and the continuous occupation. If I may say so, one of the issues that really unites Greece and Greeks around the world Hellenism in general is a Cyprus issue. What I would like from you to do and humbly, humbly beg you is to never forget what happened to Cyprus. And don't forget that still 37% of the territory of Cyprus is under Turkish occupation. And never forget that uh, the destruction of our cultural and religious heritage in the occupied part is still taking place and it's continuous and we need your support, and we need your involvement in this country, in the politics of this country, because all of you are active citizens and all of you are voters, so whoever comes and asks for your vote, please remind them what's taking place in Cyprus, and really ask them and demand from them, and you can do that, to put pressure on Turkey, to terminate its illegal occupation, to withdraw its occupation forces, to withdraw its settlers. I thank you for your support, I thank you for being here. I thank Ahi for organize this, organizing this once more, and I know you're very active, you all go around the United States, and this is remarkable. It's very important all of us to be united and fight for Cyprus. It's a national issue, it's a national issue of Hellenism. And we have to be united. And last but not least, again, let me thank Ambassador Antoniadis. It's an honor for me. I've known you for 13 years. I've learned a lot from you. I know uh, when the Czech Republic had the EU presidency, you were there on your own. You took care of everything. And I was at the Cyprus Question Department at that time. And we felt secure that he was there working for us. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Evangelos Kyriakopoulos, the Consul of Greece, to give us his greetings. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Reverend Father, uh, dear Consul General of Cyprus, Mr. Sofiano, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I am very happy to be here among you. And I, the reason I'm happy is because I see that this room is uh, full of people, full of uh, aliens full of uh, people that are sensitized with the um, Cyprus problem. We all uh, should never forget that uh, Cyprus is still divided, as the title of this documentary says. And this is a reason why, especially us who uh, chose to work in this field of diplomacy, um, should reinforce our efforts to um, find a viable and just solution and end these uh, atrocities that began in 1974 and are still going on and we should never forget that because being a Greek American and um, or belonging to the Greek Cypriot community here in the US does not only mean uh, you know, all these celebrations and uh, nights with the Greek dances. Of course, this has its importance and its place, but uh, it also means that we do not forget where we came from, and the problems that uh, our fatherland is uh, facing, and we should all work together and never forget our families, our fathers, and for many of us here tonight, the reason why we're here. Thank you very much. The uh, district governor of New Jersey and Delaware of HEPA. Uh, uh, as I said before, the uh, co organizing organization with the Hellenic Vision to give us his brief greeting. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Reverend Father Bill, uh, my good friend uh, Spiros Pires, Ahilea Nico, uh, 
special thanks to uh, the organizing committee for an outstanding event. And uh, since we have some diplomats here from New York, I wanted to remind them that Hellenism flourishes outside the metropolitan areas, as you can see. Uh, unfortunately, we're here again tonight to speak about uh, my homeland, which is still divided 37 years later. But it is very important that we keep uh, organizing this event to remind ourselves and our community that the fight must go on. It is a shame that uh, a European nation, member of the European Union, is still divided, is still conquered by a barbarian, a barbaric state in my opinion, that endeavors to become a member of the European Union. And it is very unfortunate and it makes us wonder how come they get away with it. Uh, they pursue membership to the European Union, but yet they still occupy 40% of Cyprus. And yet the United Nations doesn't do much about it and the fellow European countries don't do much about it. So it is left up to us to keep on fighting, but most importantly, we must decide what we really want. We have been compromising for the last 37 years, trying to show the international community that we are the good boys. But obviously, my friends, it doesn't work. It is time, it is due time to stand up and demand what is right for Cyprus. And we shouldn't, uh, uh, we shouldn't confuse our struggle. Our struggle should be one united message. The Turkish troops should withdraw from Cyprus. This is not a problem between the two communities. It is an invasion and a continued occupation. And unless we promote that message, I don't think we can get far by, as I said, keep compromising and try to pacify uh, our friends and the Turks uh, in Turkey and in Cyprus. I would like to ask all of you to stay alert, to stay involved. It is uh, better to be inside looking out than being out looking in. Last night uh, we had uh, a very successful faction uh, in Pines Manor, New Jersey, and we uh, showed our support to someone that has been very, very strong uh, promoting our issues, Senator Menendez. And we have to keep doing events like that, supporting our friends, because we need, we need their support, we need their help to uh, be able to make a difference. And uh, I'm very proud to announce to you that he has joined the ranks of AHEBA and he has uh, renewed and recommitted his efforts until Cyprus is free and until the, free, uh, the sun of freedom shines all over Cyprus. So please don't get disappointed, keep on fighting and I'm very hopeful that one day Cyprus will be again free from the barbarians. Thank you to the Federation of Hellenic Organizations of, of New Jersey to give us his greetings. On behalf of the Federation of Hellenic American Organizations of New Jersey, I want to commend uh, the um, organizers of this event, the American Hellenic Institute, uh, this community, and the Order of Ahepa, which has been in the forefront of uh, the Cyprus issue. With uh, the district governor uh, this year, Sava Civicus, they're going to be doing even more. Our federation has been working to promote cooperation among the organizations, the 40 organizations who are members, and as a result of that, we see today several of them co-sponsor this event. I'm very proud of that. 
I know it's a very difficult issue. We have to work on it, and we are committed. We're committed to say, as I say, Saba, that until Cyprus is free, all Greeks are Cypriots. Thank you. Kogopoulos, President of the Elitist Chair Fund at Rakhis University. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ahi, uh, Ahiepo and the Hellenic Vision for organizing this uh, uh, event. As Mr. Stratiadis just said, uh, until Cyprus uh, becomes free again, uh, all Greeks are Cypriots. Uh, this is uh, something that is essential. It's a continuation of this message of then Sechno, I do not forget. It is a fight that is continued, that is a fight for truth and justice. In the Greek language, the word truth, alithia, has a very peculiar and specific meaning. It consists of the words a, which is a negation, a negative, and lithi, which is, means to forget. The very essence of the word truth in Greek, in Greek means not to forget. So, if we are to forget an event like Cyprus, we are denying truth itself. This is something that we are not going to let happen as long as uh, Greeks are in the United States, in New Jersey, anywhere in the world. Uh, we are proud as an organization as that uh, uh, supports academic studies, the study of the history and the culture of Greece, of which Cyprus has been not in the periphery, but in the very center since prehistoric times. This is where the Greek syllabaries, the Greek alphabet, Greek language, Greek culture actually was born along with Aphrodite. Cyprus is the heart in the center, it is in the heart of the Greek world and civilization and will continue to be in the hearts of all Greeks. Thank you again for including us as co-sponsor to this uh, event and uh, we are looking forward uh, for more like this to come and to eventually have the result that we are all expecting, a Cyprus that is free, united, uh, with both communities in one country that's part of the European Union. Thank you. Much for your efforts to bring our community together once again. This cause of Cyprus has been being fought for now 37 years, and we all say that 37 years is 37 years too many. But I have bad news. I remember 36 years ago when my father, standing in a very similar setting as this, said, 12 months is 12 months too many. When is enough enough? What we need to do is to remember our dreams, remember a unified country, remember our homeland, and not just talk with ourselves. This is the starting point, and this is critical. But we must reach out to the American community, to our friends, our neighbors, and explain to them what has transpired, <clears throat> what injustices continue to be caused on a daily basis, people who can't return to their homes, people who can't freely worship, churches that have been desecrated, things which we wouldn't allow to, to exist in our communities, in our country, but yet so many of our neighbors ignore it when it happens half a world away. It's unacceptable. We know this to be the truth. We know we need to spread the word, so I implore you, please, talk to everyone you know. This issue must be a priority, and with all of our help, it will be solved in the near future. For not being able to attend as a result of prior commitments. This year we marked the 37th anniversary of the illegal 1974 Turkish invasion of Cyprus. A terrible tragedy and an ongoing one as the continued occupation of that country by tens of thousands of Turkish troops continues to deprive uh, Cypriots of their homes and those forced to flee the north estimated, estimated number approximately 200,000. Many Greek Cypriots escaped the north with little more than the clothes on their backs while some have returned to visit their homes or ancestral villages, none have been allowed to take back their rightful property. Those despoiled include an estimated 5,000 Americans of Cypriot descent. Several hundred courageous Greek Cypriots, mainly elderly people, refuse to be uprooted and today live in enclaves. The remnants have once thrived in Greek Cypriot communities which have effectively been ethnically cleansed. Hundreds of churches, chapels, and monasteries are located in the occupied part of Cyprus. 
The Helsinki Commission, of which I am chairman in this Congress, has documented the desecration and destruction of some of the over 500 religious sites in the occupied area, looted of their priceless icons, mosaics, and frescoes, once revered by the many faithful. Many of these sacred objects stolen from the churches inside or adjoining Turkish military bases have landed on the international art market. Even the dead are not allowed to rest in peace with the destruction of cemeteries. I remain deeply concerned over ongoing violations of freedom of religion and other rights in northern Cyprus. Let there be no mistake, the Turkish government is responsible for what happens in the occupied part of the island. Last Christmas, a small group of Orthodox believers gathered in the village of Riso Karpaso to celebrate the Divine Liturgy, only to have their worship disrupted by Turkish security forces who ordered them to disperse. The Helsinki Commission continues to receive reports of the demolition of churches in the region, even as others are converted to commercial uses as warehouses, barns, or casinos. The nearly four-decade-long illegal occupation of northern Cyprus by Turkey is an affront to the principles enshrined in the Helsinki Final Act, an encroachment on fundamental freedoms and human rights of Greek Cypriots living in the region's enclaves and those forced to flee the area following the 1974 invasion. Our government must continue to engage on behalf of the human rights of the Greek Cypriots. I would do any. I would do any. I'm sorry. I would do my best to ensure justice and human rights are restored in Cyprus. I have to admit, I was very apprehensive on a Saturday night in New Jersey of having this many people turn out for this event. And then when I heard the date, the first thing I did was look at the World Series sports calendar. Those of you who know me know what a diehard Philadelphia Phillies fan I am. Tonight would have been game three, and I figured, boy, we're going to be in trouble because I was sure the Phillies were going to be in the World Series. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about that problem tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it is really a pleasure to be here in the community of St. George in Trenton, which I grew up in over 30 years ago now. I've left this community since 83. And sitting up here looking across this hall, which I grew up in, it dawned on me that, frankly, I've traveled 41 states of these United States in my capacity of the American Hellenic Institute and spoken to communities all over the country, yet I've never been here before, before tonight, to do this. So really, it's sort of a homecoming for me, and it's a pleasure to be here, and I thank you, uh, Father Bill. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you, and I certainly thank the community of St. George uh, for having us here tonight. I want to thank, of course, uh, all the number, numerous people who made this happen here tonight, and obviously, uh, first and foremost, I want to uh, thank our president of our American Hellenic Institute Foundation, Spiros Perea, and of course his lovely wife, Emily, for uh, being the spearhead to get it started. So I thank you very much, Spiro and Emily. I also want to thank all the sponsored organizations and all the representatives who are being here tonight. I won't mention everyone, of course, but obviously I do want to mention the ambassador, which we had the opportunity to work very closely together when he was doing a tremendous job representing his government in Washington. Achilles, it's always been a pleasure. I congratulate you on continuing the mission well after your retirement, because as most people know, those who retire work harder, I think, sometimes than those who are working to do what they're supposed to be doing. So I, I congratulations, and I appreciate all the hard work you put into this event tonight. Dr. Georgia Tandafilo, I want to mention her and all her hard efforts as well. And it goes without saying, you know, my good friends, Sava Civigos and Tassos Tesdiadis, you know, long, long time compatriots uh, with the American Hellenic Institute. And Savas was one of our leaders of, of one of our auxiliary organizations back in the early years and has always been there fighting the good cause. And Sava, we thank you very much. And Tasso, it's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, he beat me to the punch, but I did want to recognize also Michael Ignatiu, which I saw come into the room, and I thank him for being here. Uh, and frankly, one of the items that you'll see on the documentary was in due part to his, uh, his uh, research on this very important map that you will see during the course of this uh, presentation here tonight. And sitting right next to him, and he's the last person I will mention, is uh, none other than Tasso Zampas, who's also obviously a tremendous fighter for the cause of Cyprus. And uh, Tasso, it's good to see you here as well. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, later on, you will, you will see next to me, sitting a gentleman by the name of Nick Karambolis, who's on our panel. Nick Karambolis is somebody who I can't do without. 
the amount of work that this man does on a pro bono basis and without any recognition is something to behold from where I stand. And he did practically all the efforts and all the research and all the elements regarding this thing you're about to see. He never wants to take any credit for him, but he deserves a lot of credit for this because if it wasn't for him, what you're about to see would not have been a reality here tonight. And I want to recognize Nick Aramalus, you know, my good friend, our board of directors, and our pro bono legal counsel, as he likes to call himself. Nick, thank you. On behalf of AHI, our nonprofit public policy and educational research organization, it is my pleasure to present a very important documentary proudly sponsored by our foundation called Cyprus Still Divided, a U.S. Foreign Policy Failure. The documentary premiered on Detroit PBS on Monday, September 30th, 2010. And I'm very pleased to say, for those of you who follow our announcements, that just this past Monday, October 17th, we had the Maryland Public Television System also broadcast this, one of the most important and far-reaching stations in the country, right in the center of Washington, D.C., which has an audience that reaches into Northern Virginia, the District of Columbia, and all of Maryland. And I'm pleased to say that 13,000 homes and over 20,000 viewers witnessed the program on Monday night, and they showed it three times that evening with a 10 o'clock prime time. Our hope is to get it into other additional PBS stations around the country. I'm disappointed to learn that the New Jersey PBS stations have gone out of, out of business, frankly, but we do have New York and we do have Philadelphia, and these are two markets that you cross, uh, cross over, many of the people here, so we certainly would appreciate any help in those, in those markets. As many of you are aware, Turkey's brutal illegal invasion of the Republic of Cyprus 37 years ago still leaves that nation divided to this very day. In fact, Turkey launched a two-phase invasion using U.S. supplied arms and equipment to grab nearly 37% of Cyprus's sovereign territory and force 180,000 Greek Cypriots from their homes and property. Many observers believe the United States had the knowledge and power to prevent the Turkish invasion and to later compel Turkey to withdraw its troops.